Thank you, and uh, the whole uh, Berlin all and the panorama for accepting our film over here. I think that's a really, really nice thing. So let's get a really big applause for that. It was again like a schizophrenic situation where people are applauding that there's a successful film out there. At the same time, my company is on the verge of bankruptcy and financially totally wreck. But the idea, and I think ideas are really important, idea was born as all the good ideas in Finland in a sauna. <laughs> Thanks a lot again for coming here and uh, enjoy the film. Part two. Iron Sky, the coming race. A movie called Iron Sky, the coming race. I'll share with you our short interview that we did with the director of Iron Sky. Hey everybody, Mark Walters here with BigFanboy.com and I'm here with uh, Timo and Taro from Finland. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm obviously stay that much. It's silly too. and crazy. That was awesome. All other logic is invalid at this point. They win this game. Uh, a little bit stronger reaction on uh, Kid's point about the reptile dig, okay? The rip, reptile dig, like you're fr more frustrated. And remember, it's an action sequence, so you have to be really... You don't have time to... How do I say it? You don't have time to... Well, fuck it, let's just do it again. I think you get it. Yeah. This is the best directing I've ever done. <laughs> It's, it's the same time it's exciting and the same time it's, it's challenging because it's kind of a you do something and you can't plan it detail, you just go. That's why we also make mistakes many times, but that's life. The Coming Race is, is a movie that uh, obviously builds on the first one. People who saw the first Iron Sky, they thought, okay, this is a great political satire in a science fiction setting, and there's a little bit of a romance in the story here, and, and there's all these good things going on. And with Coming Race, that movie now becomes part of a saga that begins to stretch. Like, I see, I really see Margaret Thatcher, but if I remember right, her hair is yeah. something like, mm -hmm. yeah. you recognize, okay, that would be really cool, she looks like a lizard, but with hair. It has to be something that people immediately yeah. recognize. Yeah. Iron Sky to Coming Race is certainly something that's been, well, well it's been for a long time coming, but, uh, but it's basically another take on conspiracy theories. And it's not like doing the same thing all over again, but it's certainly an evolution of the basic idea. So building on another myth, uh, the hollow earth concept, uh, and that's where, where the coming race takes off. Sometimes it takes a while to get something right, but once you get there, you really feel it in your bones that it's coming together. Then making a film is pure joy. <laughs> Good morning, this is a breakfast called Clog the Veins. I have uh, bacon, eggs, big chunks of cheese. Only in America they make cheese slices that are this thick. 
and the bacon is so greasy and then some yogurt just to look like a little bit more healthy it's very good and it's gonna kill me milk famous Elan that drinks milk we are launching the crowdfunding campaign here we are launching the promo we are doing some show we are offering some food and drinks and having fun there of he is uh, super optimistic sometimes a little bit incoherent and as he says himself uh, gambler and, and I think this gambling element is uh, in integral to everything in, in Iron Sky. So that's the stage over there with the, all that so you know it's, it's nice I like this area I think there's a nice atmosphere here. How do we fit 400 people here? That's a good question. 400. <laughs> that's not a problem. From the first times I met Timo uh, I was surprised that this guy is, is directing a film because he did not fit my stereotype of film director. Part of Timo that's most, most important directing films, I think, is that he's extremely practical, which means that he knows what he wants. Then we launched the promo, which is about five minutes thing. Uh, and afterwards, I'm thinking that maybe it would be your, your mm -hmm. turn after the promo is done. So does the film have a lizard in it? There is a, <laughs> there is a lizard thing, okay. yeah. Well, dinosaurs, I think uh, uh, every kid is in interested in dinosaurs in the beginning. I was uh, doing a lot of you know, drawing dinosaurs and, and uh, obviously when I saw Jurassic Park and films like that, I was really blown away by that. So it's always been a, a big, big dream of mine to be able to do one day my own dinosaur movie. For me, all those guys like a big sandbox. And the more I read about the conspiracy theory of the moon Nazis and the Nazi UFOs, the more I came across stories that led me to the hollow earth. Conspiracy theories are of course one of those things that, that always tickle the back of your head. That kind of what-if thinking has always been quite interesting for me. But also they are very close to one of my early hobbies, which was role-playing games. And if you go through a lot of background materials on many games, like Call of Cthulhu or Paranoia, Cyberpunk, there's a lot of stories that link back to the crazier conspiracy theories. So uh, when I started my film career, it was quite natural to sort of get stories from my sort of childhood. Yeah, se jotain tuntia, mikä on ihan älytön aika Suomessa, mutta lukee se. Toivottavasti jengi reagoi ja menee ostaa sieltä joku 50 jutun, että me saataisiin siihen mittariin tähän värinää ennen kuin se aukeaa kokonaan. I never had any plan to become a film producer, but I kind of have this entrepreneurship in my blood. I blame my father for that, because he was entrepreneur almost through his whole life, and, and I, I got the same disease from there, I guess. Basically, after I graduated from my studies, I was in a state of thinking, what, I, what do I want to do? And I was contacted by a commercial production company in Finland, and I thought, why not? Let's, let's give this a try. And I started to produce. My first company I had, I think I was 18 or 19. So it was very natural for me to, to set up blind spot pictures, my own production company. So there I was, nothing prepared and, and no plan, and suddenly I have a, a production company and I'm producing feature films. I mean, when I started to make films, I think one thing was the most strongest sort of like uh, wish or vision what I had, and that was sort of like, I want to make films which are traveling all over the world. Uh, my big hero was Aki Kaurismäki from the Finnish producers. I mean, I admired him as a director, I liked his film, but I even more admired him as a producer, how he could create his own specific style, something which, which had an audience everywhere. I've been doing films 20 years. Aeroska is the first English language film, and Aeroska is the first truly international project what I have been doing. And the way how we are doing the whole thing together with our fan base and combined in the crazy content we are doing, I think it is pretty unique.
and that's what makes it fun. That gives me actually extra energy to keep on fighting against the windmills. This is what I always wanted to have, a good potential to make something which is going to travel very strongly. A lizard dance number. Yeah. Okay, I don't cool. know how it's gonna be. I just, I just <laughs> and then the lizard's gonna like full lizard costumes and everything. It's gonna be a, nice. a body painted burlesque lizard. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how it's Sounds gonna good. be. Sounds <laughs> good. Lizard dance number. Yeah. Ah, that is wild. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with visuals for the crowdfunding campaign. I just have to finish it. When you stop this stupid filming, I will get to finish this and then I get to go to sleep. If I go to sleep, everybody goes to sleep. <laughs> I need to keep everybody going. No, soon we sleep. I promise. We started off with Tero quite a long time ago. I saw a big article about Timo and Samuli and Starfrek. And I was reading this and, and I was thinking like, who are these guys making no budget, kind of an amateur film and, and seems to be running well as business-wise and, and I thought like, wow, interesting guys. The Star Trek definitely uh, prepared me for all the roles and positions that a film has. We all had to do a little bit of everything, so we got to learn a little bit of everything in that field. It's not the best film of your career, but Star Trek became it, it was an easy calling card to show the people that, yeah, this is the first thing and then, you know, the road is open. I don't know why, but I received a synopsis or treatment from them, the story for Iron Sky. And, and I thought like, wow, this is great. This is so funny. This is crazy. And then we met with Timo and Samuli and, and uh, pretty soon we agreed, like, let's do this film. Iron Sky director, Timo Vuorensova. Yeah, hi, yeah, yeah. Some guy asked a question. Some guy from the internet asked yeah. a question. Oh, that's yeah. good. We started working on this demo around a year ago with the one single purpose, and the purpose was to create a first glimpse into the world of Iron Sky. And it's one of the important weapons we have when we head out for the big fight, which is to fund this film. Uh, very shortly, I wanted to say that we are here with two very different projects. Like we have uh, Iron Sky, English language, uh, science fiction comedy about Nazis on the moon. And, uh... First, I didn't really know what to think of him because uh, he was an experienced film producer, but, but he was at the same time a personality who, who is a quite demanding personality. And I didn't really have a grasp of him in the beginning. Today we are shooting so far in the shittiest conditions. It's horrible icy rain here in Frankfurt. So Terro, we are shooting summer now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Summer, but, sorry. <laughs> so there's, uh, there's a slight problem. Can you tell us more? Well, uh, the problem is upstairs, because as you know, we should be shooting summer, and I don't know what happened, but they opened some something, and something is coming down, and we have a bit of a problem here. But the more we started to work together, the more people I met, the more I realized that, that he's a person I can trust and rely on. So once he's on your side, he's actually really on your side. Who are these guys anyway? Nazis. From the moon. When I first saw Iron Sky 1, um, I, I liked the story. And it is, uh, for me, it is all about uh, uh, the pitch and then uh, if the, the, the movie can deliver the idea. And uh, Iron Sky uh, 1 really delivered. Nobody had done anything like that in Finland. Not really like a that scale film or, or even uh, this kind of a science fiction film. Wow, 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 wow. This is so good news, Oliver. So good news. I don't know what to say. We have to tell this to the whole world. Now, Hessen Film Invest, Deutschland. They are in. Oh. Ah. Yes! Hessen Save. kind of a mixture of Hollywood-style Hollywood filmmaking and proper Finnish film. 
but internationally it's been a very interesting the way that they got the crowdfunding concept out in the trade papers in Variety and Hollywood Reporter and Screen. The film was seen from even before it came out as something that's really a new way of filmmaking and a new way of funding films. The audience did certainly get what they wanted. Critics, not maybe that much, but uh, it's, a, it's a film that, that knew its core audience and, and reached it really well. Please welcome back on stage director Timo Borensla. It's a big e economic stress. There's so much money and, and especially there's so many moments when you don't have enough money. I had my uh, strength to go through this year by thinking like once the film is finally completed and we get it out, all will be fine. We released the film and there was kind of a hype and Iron Sky is out, it's a success and, and whatsoever, which was obviously very nice, but how wrong I was. From the beginning the target was to get this film released. I mean the dates in different territories, in different countries, as close to each other as possible. When it came out, it came out in, in Scandinavia and in Germany and in some other European countries. It was April 2012. Somewhere in the end of May, our UK distributor did pretty nasty trick as they were in a financial problems and, and, and they, they wanted to, to, to make quick money and save their company and, and they they launched Oiroskai in a very special way. It was only one day in cinema in the UK, and the next day they put the Blu-ray DVD out. So that meant that the Blu-ray was out basically six months too early, because the moment the Blu-ray is out, the good quality piracy starts. Um, a couple of countries, you know, um, they cancelled their deals with us for the release. Then they were like, hey, we don't gonna pay you, you know, the film is out, everyone can see it illegally if they want to already. So we were like, fuck, and it was really a big problem because it, it, it really reduced our expectations drastically, drastically on the, on the worldwide revenues. I mean, we were all expecting to to earn something on the, on the release of the film, which we eventually did not do. It was again like a schizophrenic situation where, where people are applauding that there's a successful film out there. At the same time, my company is, is on the verge of bankruptcy and, and, you know, financially totally wreck. So that, that was tough. After all those years thinking, sort of like having the goal, make the film, make a good film, get it out, all will be fine. Uh, everybody has a drink. Mm -hmm. Because I have the great pleasure, I have the fucking great pleasure to announce, to announce that Iron Sky, the coming race, crowdfunding campaign is open now. Yeah. Let's make it into an amazing one. I, I, th I think. The reason is that, that they, they understood what caused the financial difficulties. And I think they understood that had distribution in a couple of more key markets materialized the way it was originally envisioned, you know, the, the results would have been different. I, I think this is the challenge of the, of the movie business. It, it, it is really a very sort of pivotal thing. It doesn't take much to upset the cart that, that defines the difference between financial success and failure when you have a good product. We knew that there is much more to this than we were able to do, uh, we were able to achieve because of some of the decisions we had made and because, uh, because some, of the, some of the things that happened. 
I'm so moved, fucking moved, because whatever will happen, I'm sure it's going to end great. Yeah! Yeah! I, I'm sure that he wanted to do a sequel per se, but I think the reason he really went, decided to go through the shit again is because there was a story that was worth telling. For me, it was also part of the sort of uh, surviving the financial challenges also afterwards, because on the other hand, you see that there's all those people, you see the potential and you feel this story is not yet there. That was only the beginning, so we have to continue, we have to go on. I kind of never forget when I heard they're going to do a second one. It was the classic feeling of a tunnel, you know, and, and then you could see the light in the end of the tunnel. That Okay, yes, it's going to be made. And for me, it felt like just one day after, you know, we got to the end of the tunnel, a new tunnel was made. So, so that's why I was really mad, really, really angry. Like, when is this then going to end? There's probably going to then be a third one and fourth one. I kind of understood that this is going to be it. This is going to go on forever. Even I had all those problems. I, I don't remember that I was ever doubting about continuing. I was happy to have the chance to have a good base for something. Even your pockets are empty. I was just sort of interrupting. Can you see when he started to talk about the new product that there comes another energy? <laughs> Do you see that? Isn't that funny? Because talking about this pain and then suddenly, yeah. because then you start to shine. Yeah. The decision to continue Aeroskai was a decision to start to build a franchise. We basically like, we want to make the second film, we want to make a third film, we want to make a TV series, we want to make uh, hopefully good games and you name it. Something like the Star Wars or whatever. It was really not my idea in the beginning that I would be so deeply involved with the Iron Skies. But the more we started to work on Iron Sky The Coming Race and, and more Tero sort of revealed his vision of the whole franchise, the more I found myself to be involved in the whole thing and getting excited about the possibilities. Not really financial possibilities, that's not, not really my thing. It's more like what kind of stories I can tell in this in this world. And, and for me it's, a, it's quite a uh, in a way, a dream come true. Now then somebody will say, well, that's of course impossible, right? How could you do that? I have to remember, listen, that, you know, the first Star Wars, Star Wars movie was just one, right? Now, now that's of course, you know, what are we going to merchandise and dance? I don't know. This is where our genre uh, is commercially more challenging. <laughs> yeah, there, there are only two ways how to continue. So uh, the one way is uh, not to continue. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the, the other way is really to, to make it big. And you should be prepared to have uh, that there are a lot of disappointments, <laughs> uh, but no dream is too big. Um, and I'm not uh, joining a team to have modest dreams. Sometimes you have to think big. Please do them the favor of giving them your undivided attention, a favor I apparently did not deserve. Thank you. <laughs> Congregation, I present to you the filmmakers for Iron Sky 2, the producer, Tiro Kokomo, or something like that. They're Finnish, I can't pronounce the fucking name. And Timo, Timo Wurinsela. Everybody, come on up here. Thank you, guys. We're really happy to, and proud of the promo right now. Hopefully you like it. Did you like it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What does it say? Hey! Hey! 10%! 10%! Oh. 10 hey, come that's, on! That's a good start. Good start! We already raised $50,000. Just head over to Indiegogo.com. We still have 28 days left, which is more than enough. We're still completely not there, so we need more help, we need more support. Hello! 350000 in the campaign. A few, few more days left to go. So. Five days to go before the end of the campaign. Four days to go. And we are here to do an eight-hour awesome epic Iron Sky, The Coming Race, last push. This is Timo, the director of Iron Sky, and I'm here to celebrate the fact that we have just finally reached the goal of our crowdfunding campaign, $500,000. Without you, we would have absolutely nothing, and with you, we have everything we want, and there's only 
the sky of this island. I knew that the budget will be bigger than in the first one because there will be much more complicated visual effects. I hoped from the beginning that it wouldn't be bigger than 10 million because I felt that then handling more will be tough. But the thing about, yeah, it's, it's still... Let's prefer to get a good actor. Yeah. And then make him to look, you know, as, as yeah. near as possible, as close as possible. So, did we cast Swiss technician already? Uh, we said um, we would have a look. Through there, yeah. Because there's another actor who was playing RSK1. Who did he play? Uh, oh, <laughs> not that <laughs> good. <laughs> he was playing uh, the reporter. Witnesses claim to have seen hundreds of That's him. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you make the film in steps and, and in some point you push the button that okay, we most likely start to shoot this and this date there. So you have to start to prepare this and you have to start to hire people or at least to book people that you have to crew and so we did that. But everything didn't go as planned and I remember that one important piece of financing fell apart, you could say, like last minute. And we could not fully solve that. We lost there like one and a half million. We, we started off under finance and that's, uh, that's the worst thing you can do as a producer, you know. But don't do that ever. I mean, you know, it only film when you have the money for it. Uh, but we were, we were under such a pressure, you know, everybody was ready, the actors were ready, the, the location, the, the studio was there. I hope somebody gets some lights in here. Do we, does our budget allow some lights? Yeah, here too. Oh, good. <laughs> so, this film will be completely lighted by iPhones. Let me just get one more. It's bigger than my iPhone light can show you. Um, some of the financing would have fallen apart if we would have de de delayed the shoot. So we, we could not, you know, we looked in our eyes, all the, the three of us producers, and said, well, we have to go for it. You know, we have to do it now. And we, on the way, we have to f try to compensate that financing, what we are not having right now. The stress level is uh, on red. We are shooting in um, six and a half weeks and there's no money in the bank account. And there's a lot of people working around in Belgium and they should buy painting and all material and stuff like that. To be totally honest, right now, I don't know how to solve it. Where do we get money? Fast. Why don't you organize us one million now and you have a break on making it? I still think that it was kind of the only way, but, but it was definitely not the easy way. Day one, and where's my shoes? Shit, shit is going down! We gotta jim the fucking shit out of this shit! Listen to me. We have the train, there's the city. Following our main actor. Everybody looks amazing, I think the set looks amazing. Uh, now the only person who can fuck this whole thing up completely is me. Yes, I'm nervous. 37 days to go. And then we have Christmas. We're gonna run this as one scene, like a pro. Get up. Yeah. We are. <laughs> boom, boom. The, the brill. Oh, that's dramatic. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday. We're changing the set a little bit to make it a bit tighter, more Millennium Falcon like. This is actually the set of the interior of the Vestal Celestial ship. It's a nice change. Last time we were shooting in a huge set yesterday. Actually, the last, the whole last two weeks we've been shooting in big sets. 
This one is the first which is more confined, which is obviously more even more actor oriented when you have such a little space and the actors are all the time in the fa in your face, so that's interesting. Oh, now it looks nice, guys. I really like the practical lights and as little light as possible. This is how you really create a nice atmosphere. This is going to be in the producer's personal collection, maybe. In the beginning of the production, I spent it quite a lot of time on, on set, you know, at least to trying to be as a, as a support for, for Timo or for anybody. But pretty soon, I think it was more or less after the first week, I realized that I'm spending more and more time in, in the producer's room talking about the challenges and the problems and trying to find the solutions. This is our office. Producers and director office. Here we go. Every day we were sitting together and um, going through the shooting schedule, through the budget. It's, it's tough because you mustn't do the wrong decision. It it has a big impact on, on, on the budget, every single decision you're taking. The more days we get done, the closer we are surviving. So every day counts. We go one day at a time and the really good thing is the material, what is coming here, is everything. I need energy! Kill that motherfucking president! And action! We will find you. Got it! That is officially the weirdest thing I've done in my life. <laughs> it's day four. This morning we still had the breakfast on the catering room. So I don't know if we have that still tomorrow. Next Monday, if we don't bring some money to the catering, there won't be breakfast, there won't be lunch. And that's it. Sometimes the payroll were late and, and for several times. But I'm not happy with it. No, ask me. Satana Tunari. Almost every morning when I when I got up, I had a very bad feeling. I was like, oh shit, today this shit is going to sink. Dero has always been pretty pretty cool. I mean he he never if he's stressed he really doesn't show that that much. So I never felt like he was uh, under any tremendous pressure. I always had a, a big trust in him. He's always been a sort of level-headed and he always had a clear directional way to go. Iron Sky Universe is, is uh, we are the main shareholders in the company. So of course, Timo needs to be aware in some level. So that's also kind of a, a thing where I'm, I'm sort of keeping Timo in loop in the loop, but also trying to minimize uh, and let him concentrate on making the best possible film. So what we're doing right now here is uh, me and Dallin, the writer, we're, we're over here uh, about to shoot a scene. I thought this scene was a joke. I didn't know we were actually going to be in the movie <laughs> until Timo called me. <laughs> I thought this movie was a joke until somebody told me that we got the money to make it. <laughs> <laughs> the world is coming down. I think that's for certain that. <laughs> it's, it's been very important. It's, I think it's, a, it's, it's. I know that that sometimes he probably would need to have somebody to bounce it off on. But I'm not that person. I just uh, I will freak out and get way too stressed on stuff that I can't do anything about, and then it stops all my creative process instantly. The crew knows that that it's tough. I'm sure they don't really know how serious the, the situation is, and um, well, and I guess it's it's something. Uh, it's not a topic, and we shouldn't make it a topic because we have to keep the spirit on, and, and so we as a producers, we just have to believe that we will fix it, and everything will be fine. That's filmmaking. Uh, we ended up borrowing us money, you know, 
super highly expensive money. It's like you go to the mafia, you know, and ask the mafia for money, they say, well, yeah, okay, it's 25% or it's 50%, you know, interest or something like that. Easy. At least we have the material. We have the basis for the film. Can I also, can I get some attention please? Can I please say a few words? This is a highly emotional moment for me. Uh, I am going to miss all of you uh, in... Uh, I'm go yeah, I'm going to miss all of you. This has been a huge dream that I wanted to do uh, for many years. And I think we all can agree that we've had a one hell of a fun shoot and we made a film. This fun will be seen on the film, on the screen. It's gonna be really good film. So my deepest, deepest thank you to everyone who went through this journey with me. Thank you. <laughs> So many people who are watching you outside and they are asking like, why do you do this? It seems to be so senseless and, and, and uh, it's so risky economically and also artistically. It takes time and then the end results can be anything. I, I would like almost to say that, uh, that producing is like a disease and, and you, don't, you don't know what is the disease if you don't have it because it's it's i don't find the words how to how to describe i think it's more more like an addiction it's really you start working on a film and you find it's a you encapsulate yourself in a in a very very small bubble which has very very specific mechanics in it you're able to basically close the whole outside world away from that although it's hard work sh shooting a movie but at the same time it's very structured and uh, it has laws of its own and it's a world of its own. You get, you get easily addicted to that. And uh, once you've done it a couple of times, you realize that you, know, it's, you prefer living in that kind of system than, than sort of some other system. So. During these 25 years, there has been many moments when I've been doubting, like it doesn't make any sense to work in this, this business. And, but I always continued and I always found a new motivation and whatever. And, and, but also when I was trying to think what else could I do? Should I go to work with, with some other company? I, I, it's hard to imagine that I would be, for example, working for somebody else. And I think it's in my blood and I have to admit it. And, being an artist in, in a country like Finland, is, it's not easy to make a living as, a, as an artist over here. So I have to give up some of the uh, things that a lot of my friends have. <laughs> We're broke ass people. Uh, so it's really a decision. You do sacrifice, but it also gives you quite a lot. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to get to see the world, get to work with a lot of different kind of people, get to present your work in front of a lot of people. Those are, of course, something that it's a trade-off. Now we, we have Aeroska Universe. We had since three years and we are in post-production with Aeroska, the coming race. And we are in shooting stage with, uh, with the Chinese, Aeroska, the arc. And then we have some other things in some level trying to develop future productions. Mm -hmm. So all this sounds good, but at the same time now we are really in a deep shit. Like uh, uh, Iros got the coming race, the production has been stopped since half a year already. Because we ran out of money. We were underfinanced from the beginning and in some point the plug was disconnected and the engine stopped 
and potentially this problem could kill the whole film and if it kills the whole film it will kill the whole Iron Sky. The biggest problems are not yet solved and I have in this way I have no guarantees that that uh, <clears throat> that this will end up good. No, it can't happen. It can't, it just simply can't happen. Uh, we've been working a bunch of weeks now here after the shoot with the with the film assembling it into something which I want to call sort of the first shape. Timo started to edit the film with Jona. They did the version and then Pixomondo calculated the VFX budget based on the cut. Holy crap. Is that a problem? Yeah, this would mean we have gestures, right? What? Gestures, facial uh, animation, because that's kind of not in there. Right. Okay. Is if, there something? Uh, if we want, we can revisit the numbers, but it's. I know. I'm I know. I'm always the bad guy. Oh, but I, I, know. I, I just say. I mean, for three shots, building up. We were quite a lot of over the budget, like two million or something like this. The editing continued because they had to remove like so much VFX from it and it takes a long time to like edit and then no still too expensive edit. And this period took six months. The collaboration with Pixomondo was great, but it just took time which then created new problems. I mean, the deal with Universal, all in all, it was an interesting thing. On the other hand, I wanted to have Universal very much because they have the machinery to put this film out at the same time, and that's what we need. At the same time, I, I did not want them because I, they are kind of too big, too strong. And they take you, they take your film, and, and I don't like that. So I was all the time sort of like, we did the agreement, I was like, yeah, and then I was like, oh no, and, and like this. And, but anyway, the deal is that they pay a minimum guarantee, like an advance payment, and you need to deliver the film before the certain date. Because of this six months extra time we needed to, to find the CGI budget, we were late to deliver for Universal. So in the end, the agreement was cancelled, which created a massive problem because the money what Universal brought was gone. Basically all post-production, like we couldn't do it anymore because we didn't have uh, money to do it. The fans are demanding the film. There has been issues that we can't tell the fans why we are postponing the film and it might be that the fans will understand, but also there are like contractual reasons why you can't tell things. Like now we have been more honest and now there has been like news about the situation and we have had like also this uh, lawsuit ha has affected and another like excellent uh, side of this, <laughs> this mess. <laughs>
The beginning of the lawsuit was already years before, when this one person who who was like an internet troll against us and did comment all the time in Twitter and Facebook and everywhere and, and did start to contact our partners and claiming us of not having the rights. It became more and more serious all the time. And then suddenly there was a lawsuit. This is the market court in Helsinki. There's so many troubles, there's so many challenges that it's, it's, it, it's not necessarily nice to have this one more which has been disturbing and especially um, it came really in a, in a wrong timing. I mean there's no good timing for such a thing but we lost Universal, we lost a big partner and then I start to look for a replacing money. It took maybe half an year and I had the money when this came, this lawsuit, they were like, well, not sure, let's see, and you know, it stopped the process. You have, you have one party making claims, unfounded claims, but that cannot be proved one way or another. He cannot prove that there's any IP violation, nor, nor is it before we have the final product possible for us to prove the country. And in between, you have investors who get these conflicting messages. At least it's the first time I'm in the court with Iron Sky. Now we are very close with solving the financing issues. We, we are only missing 185,000. We are all, only missing 185,000, but this is, this is the last, last point. And after that, we can actually start to work with the post-production again, if, if, if there hasn't been any other situations happening <laughs> right now, I, I am not aware of yet. Looking for a ride, meeting in three minutes. And the battery is almost empty. This was the shortest trip in Can in my 20 plus years. I think I caught it, but we see the reality, I would guess, in within one week. I'm really happy to go home and soon start to focus on marketing the film and, and hopefully leave this shitty financing stuff behind. It has been positively busy the last few months after we finally got the production, you know, running. Day by day it feels like also that the biggest nightmares from my head are slowly leaving, which is a nice feeling after this one and a half year of, of a break, which, will, which felt quite often impossible to solve or it was pretty hard. People release all kind of shit every day. All kind of crap movies are coming daily out. You know, it's, it's, this is the one film that doesn't have to be crap. You know, we, this is the one film that these guys have invested their time and energy and their money on. This is the film that, that they want to be proud, not on the release date, but 20, 30 years after. I think the fans, they, they understand, and they actually support the fact that we take our time to finish the film the best possible way instead of rushing it out just because we absolutely have to. This film is not that kind of movie. Producing a film is like bringing up a child in a way and it's a long long way and it involves so many people and it 
of so many creative you know, counterparts at all different levels and, and it involves so many problems as well. Still, it's something very special when you see that a project really gets off the ground and you really, at the end, you know, you watch it a couple of years later in the cinema on the big screen and you think, yeah, I'm part of that, you know. Of course I have doubts about, I do, do have doubts about the, the franchise thing because it sounds so big with considering what we have seen so far. What we've seen so far is one film and, and a game and, uh, and, and a fan base online. Fans will be disappointed if, if, the, if the product isn't what they expect. And that's, that's a very interesting thing to see how the fans react to the coming race. Basically, if the coming race is a disappointment, that's the end of the franchise. I mean, there is no, no way around that. We have created a, a, a movies that will not be easily forgotten. They may not be the biggest film success in the world, but they are definitely something unique. We believed that the world has enough of certain type of movies. And this, what we're doing here, is trying to shake up the science fiction world and create some sort of new movement. And if it's not, if the whole thing has been buried 40 years from now, then we had a good run. I think it was definitely worth it. I might have promised you this a few times, but tonight it's real. Love night! The Iron Sky fans, friends, followers all over the world, over there, over there, in all the places around the world. I would like to thank you so much for trusting us, and I hope you enjoy Iron Sky, the coming race. Thank you! producing is like a disease and you don't know what is the disease if you don't have it. Paychecks all been 